So you want to know how to build your own Minecraft server, but you don't want to pay an outrageous price to a good server host per month, and you don't want to pay per month to some spotty but cheap server host. Let's talk about that. Well, first off, um, before I start, I just want to say Merry Christmas. Uh, me and Epsilon are working hard to produce some more um, videos for you guys, so just wait on those. Um, but today I'm going to be showing you basically the parts that you need to build your own Minecraft uh, server at your house. Um, but before we start, you're going to need to know two things. First, can you port forward on your router to 25565 or any port that you actually want to use for your game server because it's totally up to you. And second, you're going to want to know if your internet con connection can actually handle you actually running a um, server on it that can hold uh, 40, hundreds of people depending on how big you actually want this server. You need to call your ISP and ask them about that because you might have to upgrade your plan so you can get some more bandwidth or some other things like that. But just ask your ISP. Normally they're glad to help you and some ISPs just hate servers. They don't like the idea of it and it scares them. So you probably might want to look around the forums and see um, about that before you go call your ISP up and talking about I want to make a server just as a warning This is a $900 build guide. So if that isn't for you $900 is too much um, um, I'm sorry, but uh, if you're already paying $30 for a server online um, in Three years this will just about pay for itself so you can think about it in terms of that But when you pay $900 you can do a lot more with the server than you could if you were paying for it on a hosting service um, like you can build multiple servers um, and you can actually allow your friends to buy a server off of you or you can um, just keep the servers for yourself so now we're gonna get into the first thing the first thing that you need um, is of course the processor for the processor we're using a Xeon processor and the reason why we're using a Xeon processor is because Xeons are more for um, servers and they allow less errors to go throughout your system so a less less system shutdowns in the end for you which is a big big deal because you're a server you want to be up all the time and having a Xeon processor really sets you apart so you're gonna be using the Xeon E3 1241v3 this, proce this processor is socket 1150 and it has about the same performance as the i7-4770K. It's a beast. And the price for performance is actually very, very good. Okay, it has a um, base clock speed of 3.5 gigahertz and a turbo clock speed of 3.9. But I don't think if you're just watching, if you're just you, um, having a server, I don't think you're going to have the turbo clock. Um, but it does have that um, 3.9 turbo clocking. Um, and also, it's a quad core CPU. Next thing that you have to get, you have to get the um, Gigabyte GA. Q87N Mini ITX LGA 1150 motherboard, and um, of course this motherboard is 1150 socket because the um, processor that uh, we just went through is 1150 as well. And I won't go too much detail about the motherboard. I have I've never had a problem with uh, Gigabyte though in my experience, so I believe this should suit all of your um, server needs. And I like I and I went with an ITX because first off, there's not going to be enough um a lot of stuff in the server in the first place, so ITX should be just just as good, first off, and it just makes your build aesthetically pleasing because um instead of having a big clunky server like you see on TV and stuff like that, you have a small little server that's about this size, and it's going to be boxy, um because it's Minecraft, it's squares, um so. That was kind of like an inspiration of the video. As far as memory goes, you're going to be using a Crucial Ballistic Sport 16 gigabyte DDR3 uh, memory, 1600, uh, um, which is basically just a 2 8 gigabyte kit. 
um, with uh, two sticks, a RAM. And I know what you're thinking, why aren't you using ECC memory? Um, because this is a server. Um, well, I don't think that we're gonna um, that the Minecraft server is gonna be too intensive, and I think that the Xeon um, processor really does make the system already stable enough, so you don't even need to add an extra label, extra um, layer of stability onto the server because I think it's stable enough. Um, so let's move on. And the graphics that you're going to be using is the GT, um, GeForce GT 730 1GB. Now, um, I 730, like, pause, like, some people, what, 730, really? Um, well, first off, normally for um, server build, guys, I only use the onboard graphics or the on-chip graphics anyway. Um, because don't forget you're not gonna be gaming on the server this is for a um, this is for just a server basically see if you game on the server as well then you're um, gonna be using a lot a big portion of your memory so that's gonna be a big problem um, as far as memory goes um, so don't game just saying and it has a little bit more performance than the integrated graphics um, 4600 um, Intel integrated graphics HD um, so that's just for some comparison and the storage that we're gonna be using um, for this build is the Samsung 850 Pro series 256 um, a two and a half inch solid state drive and I'm very excited to um, be telling you guys to use this storage because um, it is new it was I think it was made back in June or July of this year um, I, I don't really know the details about that, but I'm a big fan about, I'm a big fan of the 830 and 840 series, um, chips that they have. Samsung has, um, solid state drives, so I recommend getting it, and the price for performance is, um, amazing, so go ahead and get that. And the power system that we're going to be using is the Corsair 500 watt, 80 plus, um, bronze certified semi-modular ATX power supply. I'm also a big fan of Corsair CX um, series power supplies. I recommend I will recommend them to anybody. I personally use them in my computer builds and things like that. And 500 watts is a little bit overkill for this. Will only be probably using about 200 watts, but it is upgrade proof. And um, also, if you want to change this computer, you don't want to use this as a server anymore. You want to use this as a gaming computer. You just slap in a graphics processor and 500 um, watts will be great. Um, but for this video, just stick with, stick with, stick with, stick with server. <laughs> and um, lastly, I for almost forgot about the case. Lastly, we're going to be getting the Corsair 250D case to store all of the components that I've listed previously in the video. And it's boxy and it's based off of a minimal minimalistic design. Um, and it's going to add some finesse to your server build and just make it professional looking. It's going to be about, uh, I don't know, probably about... Uh, I, I have no idea, but it's going to be small because it is ITX. And that's it, you guys. Don't forget to spam that uh, subscribe button down below. And come back and watch some more videos with us. Um, it's ProScience signing out from ProScience TV. See ya.